You all look wonderful. Thank you for coming. I am so grateful to the BYU College of Nursing and Dean Lassiter for awarding me this recognition. It is one of the greatest honors I have ever received. I love Brigham Young University and the BYU College of Nursing and what they represent. Both the university and College of Nursing mission statements have far-reaching implications for the students and faculty who teach here. The mission of Brigham Young University is to assist individuals in their quest for perfection and eternal life. The mission of BYU College of Nursing is to learn the healer's art and go forth and serve. These mission statements allow not only for an education in a chosen field, but they go far beyond this in educating the total person, including the mind, soul, and heart, and preparing them for their div divine mission and true discipleship. Internalizing the mission statements occur in students by the way well-qualified faculty teach their students, view their students, interact with students, and exemplify the mission statements in their lives. Before I begin my remarks today, I want to pay tribute to our students, alumni, faculty, and all nurses who have truly been and continue to be the heroes during this terrible pandemic. Our very own nursing students rose to the COVID occasion in helping their fellow students be tested and in manning vaccination sites. Nurses everywhere have risked their lives, their health, and so much more to do what they do best in difficult situations, and that is to bring healing and comfort to patients and families. Thank you. I also want to thank those who have mentored me, loved me, given me a vision of what I could become and then helped me achieve my full potential. They include my beloved parents, both graduates of BYU, who instilled in me the importance of education, a love of learning, and a love for BYU. Their education was obtained at great personal sacrifice, which taught me that education is worth any price. I also want to express my appreciation and love to my family who have taught me so much, helped me to grow in ways I would never grow, and then loved me. To the wonderful faculty mentors who helped me see what I could become, I am grateful. Two stand out, Chloe Tilry and Marilyn Lyons. Chloe Tilry failed me in bed making. <laughs> but then she offered to give me private lessons. You bet, I can make a tight bed if any of you need one made. But she taught me much more, including how to think and bring all the data together to develop a care plan. Her famous flow charts and process papers brought together both the art and science of nursing. Then my beloved Marilyn Lyons, who saw potential in me, nourished that potential, and in my fundamentals nursing class, encouraged me to one day return to BYU to teach in the College of Nursing. At that time, I never dreamed that would happen, but it did. And finally, to my dear friend, mentor, and colleague, Evelyn Jurgensen, who supported me in all seasons of my life and taught me how to live the healer's art and teach the healer's art, I will be forever grateful to this noble lady. I've had the opportunity to work with five deans who mentored me, helped me to grow, and taught me many things. 
they include June Lifeson, Sandy Rogers, Elaine Sortson Marshall, Beth Cole, and Patty Ravert. Each dean brought just the right skill set and expertise for what we needed during their time of service. My life has been made better and was enriched by these individuals. I'm so grateful to each one of them. Thank you. Four of them are here today. Could I have them stand up? I have entitled my talk, The Healer's Art, A Light Unto the World. The Savior, while visiting the American continent, instructed the people, therefore, hold up your light, that it might shine unto the world. Behold, I am the light, which you shall hold up. He then goes on to further define that by saying, that which you see me do. Within my office hung these two pictures. Each day as I looked at them, they reminded me of the importance of light and how we can bring light to others. One is of the Savior, who is the source of all light, but the other one is of Florence Nightingale, considered founder of modern nursing. Florence Nightingale's leadership as a nurse during the Crimean War was foundational in her views about sanitation, which saved the lives of many wounded soldiers. She set about to correct the poor conditions of the facilities, which included overcrowding, defective sewers, lack of proper ventilation, and nutrition. Her efforts resulted in reducing the death rates from 42% to 2%. But more than that, she tenderly provided comfort and hope to the wounded and became known as the Lady with the Lamp. She was described this way. She is a ministering angel without any exaggeration in these hospitals, and as her slender form glides quietly along each corridor, every poor fellow's face softens with gratitude at the sight of her. When all the medical officers have retired to the night and silence and darkness have settled upon those miles of prostate sick, she could be observed alone with a little lamp in her hand making her solitary rounds. BYU College of Nursing has a remarkable history that has allowed it to become a light to the world through emulating the healer's art. Although the College of Nursing was established in 1952, the very foundational tenets of the BYU College of Nursing evolved from the health and healing beliefs so integral to the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Unlike any other college on campus, the College of Nursing was established at the request of the highest levels of church leadership. Our roots and glorious heritage came from the Relief Society Nursing Program and the LDS Hospital School of Nursing. As I study the history of the College of Nursing, and have observed firsthand the workings of the college for over 40 years, I have come to know that Heavenly Father is very aware of the College of Nursing. I have watched miracles occur here and promises made that were fulfilled. I have come to feel deeply that the BYU College of Nursing has a divine destiny. One experience validates to me the importance Heavenly Father places on the college, the BYU College of Nursing. Several years ago, the College of Nursing was holding our fall meetings in the Joseph Smith Memorial Building in Salt Lake City. Our keynote speaker was President Henry B. Irene, who was then Elder Irene and the Commissioner of Education. During his talk, he was reflecting on the importance of our College of Nursing. He told of being president at what was then Rick's College, 
and pondering why a college of nursing is so important considering how expensive nursing colleges are. He then indi indicated that he prayerfully thought about it and it became very clear that the health and well-being of individuals are very important to Heavenly Father. And then he went on to say, and that is why the BYU College of Nursing is so important. On another occasion, President Irene, while still Commissioner of Education, came to visit Dean June Lason. In their discussion, she indicated that one of the greatest challenges was finding well-qualified faculty. That day, he promised her in a prophetic sense that if she would be prayerful, the faculty would come. She was prayerful. And I have watched a superbly well-qualified faculty who clearly understand the missions of Brigham Young University and the BYU College of Nursing have come and continue to come in fulfillment of that promise made to Dean Jude Lason. Many of them would tell you that they have spelt spiritual promptings, a spiritual drawing to come. What has been the result of their contributions? The College of Nursing has grown in reputation and stature. We are nationally known in many areas of excellence including our outstanding undergraduate program and graduate program that is nationally ranked. Our Nursing Learning Center is a center of excellence that is unequal to any other. Many come to see it because they know the learning methodologies and strategies are at cutting edge and foster significant learning. Our international student experiences until COVID has put a little bit on hold. Provide our students with unique learning experiences with varying cultures, peoples, and healthcare systems, allowing them to change their perspectives in significant ways and engender in them an appreciation and love of all God's children. Our rigorous research programs, many of which are nationally recognized, are making significant contributions to the discipline of nursing, healthcare, and to the quality of individuals' lives. Why have these significant accomplishments happened in the BYU College of Nursing? Because an inspired apostle of the Lord asked a humble dean to pray for well-qualified faculty. She did, and that prayer was answered and continues to be answered. Although the underlying tenets of learning the healer's art have always been part of the College of Nursing, the birth of the phrase occurred during the 40th anniversary celebration. I remember the day vividly. The 40th anniversary committee was meeting in the office next to mine, contemplating what the theme of the 40th anniversary should be. Suddenly, the door flung open and the committee came out singing, singing with feeling and resoluteness the words of the beloved hymn, Lord, I would follow thee, with the lyrics by Susan Evans McLeod and the music by Newell Daly. This is what I heard. I would be my brother's keeper. I would learn the healer's art to the wounded and the weary. I would show a gentle heart. I would be my brother's keeper. Lord, I would follow thee. Truly, this was a defining moment in the BYU College of Nursing. In fact, one of the finest and far-reaching moments. With time, the theme has permeated everything we do and the College of Nursing began the journey of taking the light of Christ to the world by emulating the healer's art. Two of the people in this room today, Sandy Rogers and Elaine Marshall, were in that room when the theme came about. And if you were to talk to each one of them individually, 
they would tell you that day the heavens were open and they knew the importance of the phrase, learning the healer's heart. It should be noted that as we were preparing for the 50th anniversary of the College of Nursing, we contacted Susan Evans McLeod about writing additional verses to the hymn, Lord, I Would Follow Thee, specifically for the College of Nursing. As I talked to her about doing this, she was initially hesitant, but within a few days, she contacted me and shared with me a very personal experience she had had with a nurse. Tearful, tearfully, she said to me, Mary, I know the power of a nurse, and I will write those additional verses for the BYU College of Nursing. I want you to think of the moments when you as a nurse or a student nurse have been very tired and weary of mind, body, and spirit in the care of the person and of the patient. I have been there and yearn for these blessings, which she talks about in these two verses. Stir my heart with love's compassion. When in weakness I withhold, I would heal as thou hast healed me. Comfort, strength, and enfold. Stir my heart with love's compassion. Lord, I would follow thee. Precious fleeting is my time here. Whisper wisdom to my mind. Courage when my heart is aching. Faith when fear is all I find. Precious fleeting is my time here. Lord, I would follow thee. As the theme began to permeate the college through integration into the curriculum, our teaching methods and assignments, and our culture, the need to divine, define and give vision to the healer's art was recognized. If indeed we were to teach and emulate the healer's art, I was given the opportunity to be part of that process, and my life was changed forever as I studied in detail the healing events and moments in the Savior's life. I encourage each of you to participate in a similar process. Studying the healing events of the Savior will bring you closer to the Savior. You will come to know him in a very personal way and, will be, and you will strengthen your resolve to emulate the healer's art. This is what I learned. The Savior healed with the purpose of making the individual whole. Are we, as nurses, not all about healing the entire individual, the mind, body, soul, and spirit? The Savior focused and attended to the one and their unique needs. As I have studied each healing moment, it was uniquely designed for that individual. Truly, he knew them perfectly and knew what they needed. The Savior used various healing methods, including touch, word, presence, and comfort, specifically defined for that individual. The Savior created environments that were peaceful and healing. The Savior used his knowledge and wisdom. He was all-knowing and knew the laws that governed health, healing, and wholeness. The Savior used healing attributes of empathy, love, acceptance, and compassion, regardless of personal circumstance. At times, we as nurses may be tempted to judge patients by such thoughts as, did they not bring upon themselves this disease or condition by their lifestyle and their unwillingness to follow health recommendations? If we are to fully embrace the healer's art, there is no room for such judgments. Our role is to provide the best care regardless of the circumstances that brought the patient to where they are. 
From these observations, the healer's art was defined the following way. To practice the healer's art is to emulate the principles, knowledge, attributes, and methods of the master healer. To foster environments and processes to help others to be made whole. As we try to get a hold of what the healer's art looked like, what kind of attributes did we need to develop, not only within our own personal lives, but with our, in our students. These are some supporting principles that began to, to uh, evolve. Inviting the spirit, emulating the savior, using the heart, mind, and hands, creating healing environments. To more focus our efforts uh, on the healer's art, a new mission statement was developed, which stated, the mission of BYU College of Nursing is to develop professional nurses who promote health, care for the suffering, engage in the scholarship of the discipline, invite the spirit into health and healing, and lead with faith and integrity. Today, the current mission of the BYU College of Nursing permeates every aspect of the college and is simply and strongly stated when it says, the mission of B Brigham Young University College of Nursing is to learn the healer's art and go forth and serve. The vision statement that accompanies it gives us further definition and elaboration of the mission statement by stating, guided by the truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we exemplify the healer's art by leading with faith and integrity, advancing the science of nursing and health care, promoting health and wellness, alleviating suffering, and serving individuals, families, and communities. The beginning of this vision statement is powerful as we remember that everything we do is guided by the gospel of Jesus Christ, which allows us to lead with faith and integrity. Integral to emulating the healer's art is obtaining the best knowledge and skills of the profession of nursing to promote health and wellness. It is all about using the most updated evidence and knowing how to access that evidence. It is about advancing the science of nursing and health care. All of these components are vital to emulating the healer's art. But what we uniquely bring as graduates of BYU College of Nursing in emulating the healer's art is inviting the spirit into all we do. It is then that we comfort and relieve suffering as the Savior would. The Spirit allows us to see our patients deeply as the Savior sees them and loves them. The Spirit allows us to have impressions and our eyes open to things we may not normally see, which allows us to give focused and individualized care. The Spirit allows us to develop and use the healing attributes of the Savior more fully. The Spirit allows us to magnify our knowledge and skills as we develop and follow these components of the healer's art we will bring to individual patients and families, to populations and communities, to the profession of nursing, to organizations, and ultimately the world. When we follow the mission statement and vision statement of the College of Nursing, nursing becomes more than a profession. In a very real sense, it becomes a ministry. Florence Nightingale saw her nursing profession as a ministry when she said, God has spoken to me and called me to his service. She then adds, to be a fellow worker with God is the highest aspiration to which we can conceive man, might I add woman, capable. She further describes the influence of God in her own ministry when she said, if I could give you information of my life, it would be to show how a woman of very ordinary ability 
has been led by God in strange and uncustomed paths to do in his service what he has done in her. And I could tell you all, you would see how God has done all and I nothing. As we consider the profession of nursing as a professional, a professional uh, ministry, our practice takes on new meaning and we practice differently. Nurses are invited into life's most intimate experiences that encompass birth, death, pain, and suffering. These experiences can be most difficult and challenging. It is the nurse who is there, minute by minute, making a difference to patients and families. I have been in this profession now for a long time, 48 years. I'm old. How I love nursing. My life has been transformed with my experiences as a nurse, trying to emulate the healer's art and then teaching it. But it was not until a few years ago that I truly understood the influence of a nurse in a very personal way and the power of the healer's art. I was diagnosed with cancer, which necessitated surgery and the grueling experience of chemotherapy. I had taught about cancer and provided comfort to those who were experiencing cancer treatment. I thought I understood, but now I was experiencing overwhelming feelings of fear, uncertainty, discomfort, and the unknown. I was no longer the nurse, but the frightened patient. In the quest for something to calm my troubled heart, I came to know the assurance that only the master healer can bring. I experienced every tender mercy at his hands, but it was often by those who quietly and vigilantly ministered to me. In the initial days after the diagnosis, it was the nurse who was there during my restless nights to reassure me, listen to me, and provide me hope. As I experienced chemotherapy, another nurse calmed me with her quiet presence. I came to know the power that a nurse can bring to healing and comfort. As this world darkens with evil, pain, suffering, and despair, we as nurses from BYU College of Nursing will be the light in darkness, the balm in Gilead. We will bring healing in our wings. We will emulate the healer's art. As we practice the healer's art, we will come to know the master healer and become as he is. We will see and view our patients as the Savior does, who knows and loves them perfectly. We will follow the admonition of Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, former president of Brigham Young University, who said to a group of students here in 1985, let the lamp of your education drive back the borders of darkness. My dear students, faculty, and alumni, may we never forget the divine mission and vision of Brigham Young University College of Nursing, for as we remember it always, we will be the light unto the world his light. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.